Houston, we don't have a problem. More projectile problems, and we're going to do even more complex one than we just did and try and answer, like, all the questions. Let's do a problem that's similar to the last problem, but it, with an angle, all right? So let's say, again, I have a cliff, and the cliff is 100 meters height, okay? And I've got a cannon, but now my cannon is not shooting horizontally, but it's shooting off, let's say, at uh, 20 meters per second at an angle of... 30 degrees, all right? And we want to ask the questions, how far does it travel, all right? So it's going to go, and it's going to make an arc, and it's going to land over here. But notice it's coming off at an angle, and we want to solve for all the variables that we can. So again, we're going to start with our table like we did the last time, and we have our x table, and we have our y table. We have x initial, or I say i, or 1, whatever, x2, V1 in the X, V2 in the X, acceleration, remember that's just zero, and time in the X direction. For the Y, we have Y1, we have Y2, we have V1Y, V2Y, acceleration, we know that's negative 9.8 meters per second, and we, know T, we don't know T, we're going to solve for it, okay? Now, we can now fill in some of these things. What's the x? Um, we're going to just say x initial is 0, right? And y initial is 0, all right? Uh, x, actually, x initial, now, y initial, if this is 0 and this is 100, y2, 1 is 100, and y2 is 0. Yeah, there we go. And since we know this is 20 meters per second, but it's at 30 degrees, we have we can solve for these two using SOHCAHTOA, right? So if I can say, if I've got to think of it as a triangle, if this is 30 degrees, right, boom, we know the hypotenuse is 22, or 20, pardon me, and I can then, this, this is the adjacent, and this is the opposite, and of course this is the hypotenuse, so I can say cosine of 30 degrees, Cosine is so cut, adjacent over hypotenuse, and this is the x, and this is the y, equals vx over 20, right? That's the hypotenuse. So I get my calculator out. And by the way, since I can cross-multiply to get this, right? Because if you think of this as cross-multiplication, this times this equals this times this, or vx is cos 30 times 20. So I'm going to just type 20 times cosine of 30. Does that make sense? And I get 3.1 meters per second. That's the Vx. So what I'm doing, put it over here in the table. And to get the y, that does not make sense. All right, that didn't make sense because I'm now looking at my calculator, and my calculator is in radians, and it has to be in degrees. So that does not make sense. So if you have the problem that I just did, that doesn't make sense. It should be a number pretty close to 20. I've just changed my calculator, so I'm going to do 20 times the cosine of 30, and I get 17.3. So watch your calculators. You may have the issue that I just had. It makes sense that this is 17.3. This should be a smaller number. Why, right? And then y will be just the sine. So sine of 30 equals vy over 20. So find these numbers. So I'll do sine of 30, sine of 30 times 20. I could have done the reverse, doesn't matter. Oops, I got an extra symbol there. And I get 10. Now what does that mean? That means it's traveling upwards at 10 meters per second initially. And its x direction is traveling at 17.3 meters per second. Got it? And now we want to basically fill in the gap. We want to know how far it travels. We want to find what the final velocities are, what the time is. And what's the first thing we did last class or last video is we found the time. So we're going to use the same equation that we just did. We can find the time because we know y1, we know y2, we know viy, we know a, and we're going to solve for time. And so we're going to use that first equation, right, y equals y initial plus v 
I Y T plus one half G T squared. Now this is a little more complex because now we have um, we have a quadratic. <laughs> so initial Y it starts where does Y? He's starting at a hundred. We'll say one hundred equals. No, no, he's starting at zero, right? No, he's starting at 100, and he's going to zero. Equal, no, y, I'll get this right. Y initial is 100. So this is zero equals 100 plus 10t minus 4.9t squared. You see how I got that right there? I just, g is negative 9.8 times a half at 4.9. So now what I want to do is actually... I can't solve this problem. Uh, I want to solve for t, but I don't know if you realize this, this is now a quadratic problem. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. And on a separate video, or if we need to, I will show you how to do this on a calculator. There's something called a solver. When I do the solver, um, I get the possibilities. t could either equal... Uh, 5.6 seconds, or negative uh, 3.6 seconds. So I'm using quadratic formula. Now, if you think about this for a moment, you can't have negative time. So it turns out when you solve a quadratic problem in these issues, you can only go with the number that actually makes sense. So guess what? T is 5.65 seconds. So let's just say 5.7 seconds. And now what we can do is we can go back and solve these other problems. How far has it traveled? Well, if it's traveling in x in uh, uh, 5.7 seconds in this direction, we could go back to our equation. Let's do it over here for the x direction. So x initial equals x, or x, uh, x equals x initial, and that's 0, plus the vx is 17.3 times 5.7 seconds plus one-half at squared, but the one-half at squared, it's not accelerating because a is zero. So the, the, the range is going to be 17.3 17, 17 times 5.7 gives me 98.6. So this is 98.6. So it's going to travel 98.6 meters on, in its trajectory. Um, and then we can solve for, I guess we've solved for everything here so far, except for... V2, right? So if I want to find V2x and V2... V2x, because he's traveling, continually traveling at 17.3, is 17.3. But V2y, we have to use the equation. V2 squared equals V1 squared plus uh, 2a times the distance. So V2 squared is still V2 squared. So V2 squared equals V1. Now, we do know V1. V1 was 10, is that what it was? Yeah, v, a 10 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times, now let's make sure we think about this. What is the change in height? It will be 100, right? And so I'll say 2 times 100 times 9.8, I get 1960. This is negative 1960, and this is 110 squared. I think it's going, he's going negative 100 feet because he's falling. So it'll be 1960 plus 100 gives me 2060. That's easy, right? And then I'll take the square root of that, and I get 45. I get V2 equals 45.4 me, meters per second. So that's 45.4 meters per second, okay? And uh, if I wanted to find the total final velocity, you'd do Pythagorean theorem, this squared plus this squared and square rooted, and that would be the final speed it hits the ground or a ship or whatever it's shooting at. All right, Houston, I know these problems get long and cumbersome. That's the, that's the issue, isn't it? Uh, but that's the nature of projectile motion problems. There's a lot of things on this board. It's probably confusing, but walk through the steps. It's all about the X's and the Y's and figuring things out. Notice I'm almost always solving for time first because time is the variable. I know this is a little tricky. we got to do a quadratic formula, but you learned about that in math class. 
And uh, I will show you how to do that quickly on a calculator uh, so that you don't have to like actually do the quadratic formula. Uh, we'll see you in class. We don't have a problem, Houston. <laughs>